Good evening, Saints fans. Saints TV here, Judge Jaden. Um, here to discuss our performance on the weekend against the Richmond Tigers yesterday at Marvel Stadium. Um, before we do go into that, though, I want to um, commend all of the people wearing the purple for the MRV Matty Reorts Vision um, charity yesterday. Um, it was great to see a, a great sea of purple, um, and, and it's a really you know, strong effort from the club to, to sort of bring everyone together and, and have that family atmosphere there. So um, it makes you proud to be a secure supporter when, that, when those little things happen. Um, they're only small, but they can go a long way, not only for charity, but for, for bringing fans to the game as well. So uh, well done to the boys, the club, and the fans all turned out in purple. Um, to our performance, I thought it was a tale of two halves. First half was really strong and positive. Um, pressure football. You know, they were willing, willing to take the risk. Um, they were slow when it needed to be slow and, and quick when it needed to be quick. Um, and they were really accurate in front of goal. Second half, uh, they went into the shell a little bit, went into the form that they've been playing within the last couple of weeks. Um, and, and it really showed, unfortunately. It's it's a tough game, AFL. It's um, not for the faint-hearted, but um, sometimes the risk needs to, to be had to to try and break through a wall. And, and that's what Richmond did defensively yesterday really well. Um, when we did have possession of the ball in our back half, they set up instantly and it was very hard to break down. And um, when that does happen, it, it needs someone like a, a Savage or, or a, you know, a Clark or a Billings, aggressive type player to break the lines and, and take that risk inside the middle. 45 degree angle going straight through the corridor, opens the whole ground up. Um, rather than just sticking by the line. And, and you get too predictable if you kick it down the line each trip down. Um, Polish. Polish is a very um, cons- or big concern for me at the moment inside the forward half of the ground. Um, Hannibal is not that player. He's, he's another inside mid. We really need that Josh Kelly type player um, to be able to kick it in and, and lower the eyes and really deliver to our, our key forwards. Too many times when you, it's coming in, inside, it's a pack of five, six players and three, three on three sort of scenarios, and that doesn't work like that. Not in AFL. Uh, we really need to be hitting the boys on the leads. Tim Membry's got a great pair of hands, and would be one of the toughest one-on-one competitors um, for a defender. And, and if you're putting him in the pack, I know he's got the athletic ability of being able to jump up, but it allows another player to impact his his run and jump at it. So. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. You've got to stick with them. Um, but at the same time, they really need to be taking those risks. Um, you're not going to get a, a delivery in every, you know, 90% of the time, every time. It's going to take a, a few risks that are 50-50 or 40-60. And, and they're the ones that sort of separate the good sides from the, the final sides. So um, moving on to the stats. Um, clearance numbers 36-24. to 24, Good result there. But 26 to 9 were around the ground. Royal Marshall was probably best on ground for security yesterday. Inside 50 numbers were 48 all yet. One team scored 16 goals, one, sc- one team scored 10. We're really struggling to get over that 70, 75 point margin. Um, and it's becoming a real big concern at AFL. You're not going to win many games doing that. You're going to win a lot more games. You get over 86, 80, you know, that 90 range, and then get over 100. You're pretty much nearly guaranteed a solid W. So, um, much to work on offensively and probably a little bit defensively. We got burnt on the on the counter attack way too much. Um, sort of what we were doing at the start of the year to the Essendon and Melbourne, just really getting out the back door and, and having three or four guys just run into the open fifty by themselves. So um, go down to individual players. Um, as I said before, Ron Marshall again another standout performance from him. Um, Nineteen disposals, eighty percent efficiency, thirty three hitouts as well. Nine marks, uh, three tackles, five inside 50s, and a goal as well. And he's becoming a really, really important pay- player. Would be leading our BNF quite easily, I would have thought, um, ahead of Jack Billings. And, and that just goes to show just how much improvement he's had this year. But it also means that he, I think he knows that he need, he's got a lot more improvement to go as well. So if he can keep improving that, that um, scope of just how much he can do on the football field, being a ruckman, and it's not so much against those less intimidating guys like Soldo and and Tim English and those sort of players. It's against the Max Scorn, Brody Grundy, 
um, Nick Nat Nui, those sort of players. If you can have those performances against them, we need to lock him down for another 10 years. So um, go down the list even further. Ross, 27, but 65 or 66% efficiency. His, his, his handball is good. Kicking, though, it's just absolutely shocking. He just hops it up in the air and hopes for the best, and that's a big problem as why well. we can't generate a lot of scores. Um, Josh Battle, 20 touches, 90% efficiency, 11 marks, another strong performance from him. Um, he's elevated his game up this year, especially in, those, in the absences of um, Jay Carlo for the majority of the year. But even now, he's still one-on-one defender. He's not too bad. Um, gave away a few silly free kicks, which I was a bit disappointed in. But apart from that, he had a really strong outing. Excuse me. Um, two guys I do want to touch on. Jack Billings was good, 26 touches. Um, but Hunter Clark defensively, 23 touches, 80% efficiency. It's a really strong effort from him. A guy that I knocked, knocked around a little bit this year because I expected a little bit more of him. Um, you know, number seven pick in the draft. And he, he's really struggled to cement a spot in that in that final 22. Um, but on the weekend, he showed in that first half when the pressure was there, the pressure was hot. He was willing to put his body on the line, jump in front of packs, um, and really earn every ball that he got. Um, and he's, he's used coming out of it. First half, he was willing. He was the one willing to take the risk, um, and he was using the ball really, really well, both sides of the feet. And that's why we drafted him um, in a couple of years ago. So. Um, strong outing from him. He'll cement his spot for next week. And I dare say he needs to play the rest of the year, as does Nick Caulfield. I thought he was also good. Um, not as much influence as Clark, but um, I, I still think he had stages of, of what we could see, glimpses of um, what, what he does bring to the table. Had 16 touches, uh, nine, nine marks. Um, and yeah, I, I thought his impact was good at stages. There was a bit of times when, you know, you probably went out of the game a little bit, which does happen with younger players. Um, but overall, 94% efficiency, used the ball really well. So um, great stuff from Koff. Ben Long, I thought his um, energy around the contest was really good. I think we, we sort of lacked that a little bit. Um, but he really came in, took some really strong contested marks um, and... You know, was able to hit the scoreboard, only the one goal, two, one goal, one, sorry. Um, so, you know, he changed that to two goals. And it's a, you know, a really strong performance from a small forward. Um, Nick Hine, another good performance, two goals, kicked those two within a, within a minute or two, I think. Um, and he's really a live wire up forward. His pace and impact on the, on the ball user on the opposition's absolutely fantastic. Um, and one that, He's sort of leading from the front and what we sort of missed from Jack Loney a little bit. So um, float the idea of maybe him going into the middle for the center bounce clearances as well. He's got he's a real strong upper body, hard to tackle, and he's just got that agility and speed to be able to break away. So um, I think that's an idea they might float around with in the, in the next couple of weeks um, as we draw the close to the season. Um, ben Patton, probably the player... Um, that's under the microscope a little bit, but I thought I still thought he played all right. Um, you know, he went at 77% efficiency, 13 touches. I'd like to get close to that 20. Um, he's another one that I'd like to take that risk coming in outside of defense. Um, you know, you, you take those risks and, and sometimes they might not come off, but I think as a fan, you sort of like to see that rather than a big hoff down the line, boundary throwing, and then we get burned from the center clearance. Um, it allows the ground to open up. Um, it means, you know, everyone can lower their eyes more because you'll have leading targets going left, right, and center. Um, it gives gets Bruce and Membry into the game a little bit, and then the small forwards of Hind, Parker, Long um, to crumb those, those you know, mistakes here and there. So, and with that, if you, do, if you do take that risk inside, then it sort of shakes up the defensive setup as well. They think, okay, well, they've done this a couple of times. Maybe we need to go there, and it opens up op- other options as well. So, it's all mind game football, um, especially moving the ball. You know, a, a team teams prepare for for one or two things. If you give them another three or four, well, then it really shakes things up and it, it gives you the mental edge in that aspect. Um, this weekend, take on North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium this Sunday. Um, 
the time of that game is, I think it's a twilight game. No, sorry, it's 3.20 p.m. Um, Melbourne time. I don't think there'll be any changes. I think if there is one, Dalton Langlands might get a, a, um, a debut this week. He's been in some really good form. Um, Noons had 25 in the twos, but I'd like to see a couple more weeks for him um, to get some form back because after one week, I don't think that's warranted to get it, earn a call up. Um, and I dare say if Langlands does come in, um, it'll be for someone like McKenzie or Patton, um, one of those two. For me, three players that have to play the rest of the year, Hind, uh, Caulfield and Clark, they're three of the future pieces. Um, maybe Matthew Parker has a, a sit out for a week or two, bring back Robbie Young. Um, just It doesn't allow young players to get comfortable in their position um, and it sort of puts a bit of heat on them um, with selection issues there. So... That's it for this week. Um, we'll be back next week to dissect our Sunday game against the North Melbourne Kangaroos. See you then.